fucking stupid. God, I keep driving with the guy all over there. So oh my bad. god. It's simple boss. <laughs> And you missed Patron, Patreon supporter is David Ray. No, oh, it's not David Ray, it's Michael Reeve. F***, I heard it's David Ray, you just mentioned David, David Ray is an executive producer. I just f***ing wrote that, I just said to you, Bobby. He did that. And he was like, no, he's not a f***ing exec. No, you're talking about the new guy. We didn't talk about oh him. God, Bobby, you f***. You did. Get it together. Are you recording this? Now I am. Go, yeah, I've been. Check, <laughs> check the footage, Bobby. You should have gone back. I started. Don't give me your nonsense. It's your nonsense, Bobby. We're still You're full of it. 12 minutes waiting for your shenanigans to get over. So I can start recording. You're so confusing, Bobby. You're confusing. Your face is confusing. Not as confusing as your choice in video games. What the hell does that mean? Right, hang on. So, David Ray is an exec. Who is our newest Michael, patron? Michael Reeve. Our newest Patreon supporter. Oh my lord. Can you read a little bit of pep? Yeah, Michael you know, Reeve. It's, it's like you're reading off of, of a Michael card. Reeve. Michael, Michael Reeve. Reeve. Yes. Can you, can you add a little pep to this when you when you read? Look, I'm not some hyped up Canadian. I'm not looking right? for you to be a hyped up Canadian. I'm looking for you to have a little bit of enthusiasm when you're. Look, Bobby, I'm people. trying not to mess up. Oh. I have to do it more serious than other people, otherwise, I trip over my words. I'm British, Bobby. What would you expect? Not Come much. On. Not much. That's why we left you, son of a guns. Behave yourself, you Bobby. You behave yourself, Tobey. Toby. Are we ready? Are we ready? We are ready, Toby. <sighs> this week's executive project. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but I'm trying to give it pep and I'm already messing what are you up. Talking about this week's Patreon supporters. This week's episode of Nintendo Bobby, PlayStation Bobby, Podcast Bobby, Bobby, is brought Bobby, to you by Bobby, our Bobby, wonderful Bobby, Patreon supporters. Bobby. 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 Bobby, Bobby, stop Bobby, it. Bobby, stop, stop it. Behave it. yourself. Behave yourself, Bobby. This episode is brought to you by all of our patrons. To become a patron, head over to patreon.com forward slash make us better. This week's executive producers are Nick from Next Level Games in New Jersey, Joel Brooks, James Johnson, Sheldon Benedict, Jesse Armstrong, Gokko Schaefer, and David Ray. Our newest Patreon supporter is Michael Reeve. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 14 of the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast. Man, my numbers are getting so messed up in my head. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my best friend, my very low-key, my very non-energetic best friend in all the land, Toby Thornton. What is up, Toby? How are you today? I'm a little bit befuddled You're today. befuddled every day. You open your eyes befuddled. <clears throat> no, right? So, this morning, um, we... All right, so... Let's go back uh, about a week or so, okay. and I woke up in the middle of the night to hearing your voice on my phone. How did that happen? Um, I'll get to that, right? Okay. But I was like, why, why can I hear Bobby? I'm sleeping. I shouldn't be able to hear Bobby right now. It was freaking me out, and I was like, why is my phone on? So I turned it off, and then this morning I woke up, and my wife is next to me. She's got my phone in her hand, and she's like... Uh, so what is your phone doing right now? So I'm like, well, I stopped touching my phone. What are you doing? So then she showed me, and there's a chat app, WhatsApp, and I've got a chat open with Mike Drummy on there. And during the night, my phone decided to start recording audio clips and sending them to Mike. <laughs> so, what? Yeah. So 
like there was about 15 or so like clips of audio some of them were like 10 seconds there was one that was like five minutes of just me like drooling and snoring god knows why right and so i'm like oh my god so i was i I googled it and apparently it's just some quirk with my phone that if you have it charging because i charge it overnight every time (laughs) And whilst it's charging, if you have, like, the brightness too high, it starts doing, like, phantom touches. What? And it's, like, it moves apps around on its own. It opens apps on its own, which is why it was playing you on YouTube that time. Oh, my Lord. It's got, like, a mind of its own, so. That's weird. Go really, buy an really Apple, cool. would you, man? Stop with the, stop fighting progression and progress and amazingness and go buy an iPhone. Bobby, come on. No, enough of this. This is ridiculous. Your phone is going to get you in trouble one of these days. Yeah. Yeah, it might. <laughs> Good lord, man. Kareem's going to divorce you because the phone <laughs> the phone started playing porn clips in the middle of the night. <laughs> Opening up my most recent tabs. Yeah, and she's like, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is pretty. It's nothing bad. It's just like normal, regular porn, not some crazy stuff like bestiality yeah. or something crazy like that. And he, Princess like, Peach, yeah, she like, yeah, she'd be like, all right, Toby, you, you need to leave the house. Like, go away now. Oh my god. So, oh, so how are you? I am. Are well. you enjoying your baseball game? I, I am. We'll get into that. I am. What? I am. I really am. I like it. It's uh, oh, we'll get into it. We'll get into it a little bit. Um, okay. So let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our Geek Outs. Toby. Geek Outs! <sighs> oh, well, you know what? This is horrible. I'm going to just record <laughs> Sean saying Geek Outs and then plug that in at that yeah, point. Yeah, just cut it in. Cut Good Sean lord, in. man. You are horrible. Um, what are you geeking out about? I'm geeking out about Blossom Towels has been announced as a console exclusive for the Nintendo Switch. What is Blossom Tales? I don't know if you remember, but like probably six months to a year ago, I sent you a message with a trailer for this game called Blossom Tales. And it's a, currently it's on PC on Steam. And it's basically a link to the past in modern form. It's pixel graphics, top down, just like that. It's an action RPG. It's got all the staple weapons it's got bombs and arrows and all that lovely stuff so it's basically a, a sort of fan sequel to a link wow, to the past get out of here yeah and it looks so cool it's got dungeons it's a completely beautiful what, game what's it called blossom towels i gotta check that out is there a yeah, trailer so I'm, for it? yeah there is a trailer okay. it's, it's been out on steam for a while um okay. since last year and when i i did actually show you a trailer you just obviously forgotten about it and you said it looked really cool awesome. so what i'll do is i will at this point in the video i will put the trailer in so then people can watch the trailer yeah then... man it's really really good yeah. and you know it's published by i think it's fdg entertainment the same company that published ocean horn your favorite zelda like so oh. you know if people want their top down zelda fix on the switch I want then... a top down zelda fix not ocean yeah horn then th- I think this is going to be it. I think people are going to love this game. Wasn't there a sequel to Oceanhorn? Uh, they are making a sequel. Okay. It's more of a 3D sort of action RPG, like behind the camera, behind the character sort of thing. They need to get... Eh, whatever. Anyway. Let's go. Uh, myself, I'm, ba- I'm going to do a video on this as well, but I'm just going to tell you what it is and, and let you guys break it down and stuff until I actually get it set up in my game room and and put it on the wall and stuff. I bought a an amiibo kiosk off of somebody. So you what, guys like from a store? From I didn't buy it from the store. I but it, it, it was in a store. It was in a GameStop. Okay. So it's ba- so okay in the United States when you go to whatever store when you go to Target you go to Best Buy you go to GameStop all the, all the stores that sell Amiibo what it is, is you have a, a it's a television monitor right right and then okay. underneath of it is a display of four Amiibo and one Amiibo card 
And it has, like, the Mario. It has Mario, Princess Peach, Luigi, and I think Yoshi in the, mm-hmm. in the display. But I, I'm taking them out, and I'm putting my custom Amiibo in there instead. Cool. Um, and then it's a touch screen. So if I click it and I go Mario, it'll show me the whole how Amiibo works and then, like, how, like, what games Mario will unlock things in and what he'll unlock things. It shows the compatibility, but it does it with all the Amiibo. That's so you, cool. Dude, it is awesome. And it's, like, all lit up. It's got the Amiibo logo up top over the TV, and it, like, lights mm. up, and it's got lights. How, how up-to-date is it, though? It's only, like, uh, probably a month ago they took it out of store. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. up to date. I mean, it's I mean it's not like... The cl- I don't think Cloud and them will be in it. Right. But I wonder if you can, like, download a firmware update for it, though. Like, I don't know, man. It, it I could open the backup and stuff, but you got to, like, cut all this, this stuff that's hooked on. I'm not really <laughs> yeah. messing with it too much. But what I want to see is, would I be able to, like, hook a NES Mini Classic to it or the SNES Classic to it? Because that'd be mm-hmm. kind of cool to have, like... I could be like, hey, let's play on this. And then you go and play. But, dude, it is just really cool like it it talks and everything like it's really you have mario saying like you know amiibo and, and all that stuff and like it dude it's crazy man it's like yeah it sounds cool yeah, it's it's really awesome so yeah because um like i watched this show on youtube youtube called the game chasers mm-hmm. and those guys are constantly going into like old rundown malls and stuff and looking for like old nintendo display cases and stuff mm-hmm. for their garages yeah yeah so I think that's like a real cool piece of memorabilia that you got there. And if you hold on to it for long enough, for it will be money. highly it's, it's already like on eBay. They go for like five, six hundred dollars. Yeah. eBay. I didn't pay that much for it. Um, I mean, I paid a good amount for it, but I didn't pay that much for it. And mm-hmm. but it was like I talked to Tony about it. I was supposed to buy it a couple months ago. Yeah. And just bills came <laughs> up and such. and I just didn't have the money. And then I talked to Tony and Tony's like, man, you really you should really buy that. Like, that's something that's special you know what i mean like yeah. that's something that's really cool and i was like yeah, yeah 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 and so i'm like then the opportunity came up the other day and i was like i bought it from chris lugo um friend of the show and stuff and he's, yeah like, he's in the facebook group and all that and he's been for a long time and but i bought it and i was like i gotta get this thing like i need to own this thing and i bought it and i was like so hyped i can't i can't wait to i just first i gotta find where i'm gonna put it part of me wants to put it behind me here but mm. I, don't, I can't put it in the corner. It's not no. Work. Um, so I might put it on the wall over there. I just I don't know. I want it to be a focal point. Like yeah, yeah. But what I thought was because I had my Mario mural on the wall over there, maybe I'd put it over there because there's a plug there too, so I can yeah. kind of like put it like Mario's. You should do um thing. yeah, do like a uh, game room tour. Oh, I'm going once to. Got it set up, once I yeah. get it set up, I'm going to kind of clean the room up a little bit and like set some things up because I bought some new stuff I need to put out and get it looking nice and stuff but I'm going to do a, a room tour because everybody's like I've been getting that message a lot like people have been saying yeah. we need a room tour we need a room tour and it's been about a year since I yeah. did this all so it's time to, to show it off and stuff awesome can't wait I can't wait either so we be pretty awesome mm-hmm. so let's jump into our first topic um, we're going to go Nintendo this week and cool. my, my topic is with the LA Noir coming to Switch does this test of sorts make you confident that Rockstar could start showing support with other ports to the Switch? And if so, what are you looking forward to getting ported over? Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, so, um, a, let's be honest. This is obviously a test, right? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, it's sort of a low-risk thing for them because they were working on the PS4, Xbox One ports at the same time. Yeah. So they probably thought, well, we might as well just throw it on the Switch and see how it does on there as well. Um, what I will say is that I'm not sure if it's got like the updated textures and stuff that the PS4 version and all that has. Uh, they might get the textures, but I don't know that it'll be all like high depth, <laughs> super high depth. Yeah, stuff. so I think it's more like they've catered it to the Switch console itself because they're adding like the motion control gesture control stuff mm-hmm. the touch touch screen stuff and they're also adding uh like as more zoomed in over the shoulder camera perspective which is perfect for handheld mode which yes. i think is a really cool thing for them to do you know because i think a lot of developers for the switch come across that problem of uh when they do go into handheld mode how does that translate like is the gameplay 
going to work in handheld the same way that it does on the, the TV. Mm-hmm. So that's a really like nice consideration for them. I mean, you know, to be expected though, cause they're not exactly a sloppy developer. You no, know? no, not at all. Um, so yeah, I think that, um, if it does well, then I think the most likely or maybe, uh, maybe not necessarily most likely, but I think the best thing that they could do afterwards, if, if it's a big success is GTA five. Man, and, you really think they could do something that big though. Yes, because GTA Five originally came out on 360 and PlayStation oh 3. Oh my god, that's right. Exactly. That's so, right, I forgot. So even if it's just that version, if it doesn't have the first-person mode and, and all the better textures and lighting and stuff, like I think they could still do... Like, that game on the go would oh, be incredible. My like, lord. I didn't, you know what? It never dawned on me they did it on there. Yeah, and if, so... <clears throat> yeah, you're right. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to run on the Switch. Yeah. Oh, that would be so cool! That, I mean, man, it's, I didn't even it's, think about that. it's one of the best-selling games of all time, and uh, yeah. it would—it's a brand new audience for them because, you know, everyone—I don't see how it stays in the charts every month. It's like yeah. who doesn't own this already? Yeah. But a considerable amount of people don't own it because there's a lot of people that are only Nintendo gamers. Yeah, and those people will buy this game if it's on. Switch. Oh, dude, you would have to like this is this is one of those games that like. It would open your eyes to a new world, yeah. man. I'm really, I'm really excited about LA, LA Noir. I'm going to mm. buy it. Um, I can't remember if I, I definitely didn't buy. I can't remember I bought it on on the PS3. Um, I might have bought it and then got rid of it really quick. But I'm going to buy it again, regardless. I'm getting it. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely want to get it. So a, I want to show support. <laughs> Yeah, uh, definitely show support for this because, like you said, man, if if there's a potential that they bring, I wasn't even thinking GTA Five. That never even dawned because I'm thinking GTA Five is a PS4 game. I mm. totally forgot that that's a port. That that was actually on the on the PS3 and the yeah. 360 first, and then they brought it over to the PS4, um, and the Xbox One, and they added a bunch of stuff to it. Right? Yeah, they, they made it. Well, basically, they opened up the draw distance on it a little bit. Yeah, um, basically, they improved the graphics a bit, and yeah. the biggest feature, I think, was just the first-person mode, Man, which is, I think, imagine, that's exclusive. So. Could you imagine how explosive that would be if they brought that to Switch? Yeah. Now, a game like Red Dead, the but, first one, Red Dead Redemption, yeah. that could make it. They, they could port that eventually. Yeah, I, I, I worry about that, because I think... Red Dead 2 is coming out, and if Switch owners just get a Red well, Dead 1 port, I know it's like an amazing, one of the best games ever, yeah. but it's, people will feel like, oh, no, why no, don't no, we get I don't 2? Mean, I don't mean now. Like, I'm talking in the future. Like, mm. I don't mean now. Because for me, when I look at it, I go, man, well, I would love to see Bully make its way over. Yeah. Um, I would like to see a sequel to Bully. Yeah. Um, I know they did Bully 2, but I would like to see, like, maybe Bully 3, like an old, like an older version, like something that's built from the ground up. Because um, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, Bully Two went to the Wii first, and then it. it I'm, I'm not even sure. Really. I don't know too much about that. I, I I only thought there was one Bully game. But... I, thought was, I thought it was two. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't either. know. But I like that game. That game was really cool. It was very yeah. GTA style, but set in a in a in a school. I yeah. liked it. I like. I I thought it was really. Cool uh, yeah, game. it was a interesting take. Like yeah. I've seen someone play it, and it's. It's not what you expect it to be. You no, know? but it's really good, man. It is yeah. really good. Um, you know, it's about a kid that goes to a private school, and yeah. he's, like, doing these little things, and he's, like, beating up bullies and stuff like that. Like, he's, you know... Yeah, he's he's no saint, but he no. is, like, the good guy. Yeah. He, he's, you know... It, it's a good game. It's a really good yeah. game. But it's very GTA-esque. You know? Yeah. Like... All the stuff. It's basically G. It's it's basically a more low key GT, but it's still pretty bad. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. it's it's not as graphic and not as bad. Yeah, as GTA. Yeah. Like you're beating people with baseball bats. You're not actually shooting them and stuff like yeah. that. So it's it's good. Um, I don't know what. Or so other than like, would you like to see them port some of the earlier GTAs as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, as long as they do it well. Yeah, I would um, like them to see them dress it up a little bit. I wouldn't want to just direct the ports of, like... Because obviously... Well, like, the thing is, like, play... I would... 
yeah i wouldn't even mind just a direct hd port of the like the free like gta3 uh vice city and san andreas Mm -hmm. possibly even throw in vice city stories and and all that like those spin-offs did they uh they haven't done that yet though have they um hd port of those Oh, yeah, you can download them on PS4. I'm not sure if they're in HD. I can't remember. I played them around. If they're HD, they look very damn good. The thing is, like, those games, they are old games (laughs) now. (laughs) And, you know, the pop-in is atrocious on them. (laughs) They would need need to do something to fix it. Even the driving is bad compared to what it is now. Like, it is definitely, yeah. It's funny how, how, in your mind, it was an amazing game. And then when you play it, it's like... Wow, this is hurting so bad. Yeah, you know, compared to now, like when when you play GTA Five, it's like, dude, it is so crisp and so clear just to play. Yeah, like, but I I I beat GTA Five, so that means I'm the better GTA player than Toby. But you know, for me, like I would be willing to play it again. I would definitely play it because that game was fantastic. Like the yeah. story was amazing, and I would probably you know what? Probably actually, do a lot more. Yeah. If I, if I had GTA Five on the Switch, I probably would complete the story mode because then I could play it in bed or whatever and like stop, anywhere. Stop the lies. Because you know, it's, you know what? It, no, it, it's you like you haven't even beat Zelda yet, and you're over there talking about GTA Five. Yeah, but Bobby, I put like ninety odd hours into Zelda, something like that. But like GTA Five, I put all of my time into the online. So like, I'm nearly level two hundred in GTA Five online. I've got way more hours yeah, than online. you have. Online, yeah, but like. That is, I've I've made progress online, and that's where I had the most fun in that game. You just, but you haven't beaten Tubes. Oh my God, Bobby! We're not, Bobby, we're not drop, on the same level. We're not on the it. same Come level, on. man. Just you drop it. Just one day admit that you're just not as good as me. It's fine. I understand. I know it's a sore spot because you wasted all your life playing online. Bobby, but when it have, comes to the have actual people game, watched you play with us online? That's not that's not the point. That's driving. Yes, it is. That's driving tracks. It's not driving. It's, it's just it's everything, Bobby. Not, Bobby, come on. It, there's a cheat in the in the thing. So you and Mike build these tracks, right? And then you know what the tracks are. And oh then I go in and play them Bobby. and you guys play them every single night. So by the no, time I play not. by the time I play one night a week, I'm not Bobby, up to snuff, man. Bobby, how have we suddenly degraded back to our childhood? We're like two little children arguing who's better at GTA. Come on. Because this is important <laughs> stuff. People need to know this. People need to know ah. that I'm better than you at GTA 5. All right. You keep I, dreaming, Bobby. I beat keep it. You did not beat it. You... Okay. Did you beat the game? I, I beat it. Did you beat online. the game? <laughs> no, you did not beat it online. <laughs> I oh, know it's impossible to be online, but exactly because it keeps going and going and going. Did you beat it online, or did you beat it? Got, uh, did you beat look. the game? Did you beat GTA Five? Answer the question. It's a simple yes or no. Let's go into the PlayStation did you topic, beat right? <laughs> beat, did you beat the game? It's a quick. It's what a, does it matter whether I beat the game, Bobby? Did you beat the game? Yes or no? I did. I did not beat the story. Thank mode. you. Okay, moving on. I'm the better player. Thank you. Moving on. So, go ahead. What's your topic for today? I can't even think of what my topic <laughs> is right now, boy. I'm, I'm raging. <laughs> I love it. You want me to read your topic for you since you don't know it? No, I'm getting it up myself. Oh, my right. lord. That was amazing. I love it. You finally admitted I'm better than you. I love it. No, I did not admit anything. You're just saying it. <laughs> it right. So, this is my topic. Is is resolution and graphical fidelity the only thing the PlayStation Five could do better? What do we see in the future of PlayStation? Hmm. I feel like they're going to do something to rival the Switch. I don't see them just laying down to what the Switch is like. I don't see them letting Nintendo just eat up all this ground. Because Nintendo mm. is gaining ground. I don't care yeah. what anybody says. They are definitely gaining ground. Like, look, they have... When you look at it, essentially, like, PlayStation has, what, a, a four-year start? A four-year head start on Nintendo when it comes to yeah. PlayStation 4 against the Switch. But if you look year on year, like, what PlayStation 4 did year one against what Nintendo did year one, I'd be curious to see how much closer Nintendo is to that gap fill. Um, the numbers, in I'll tell you right now, in Japan, they are 
crushing everything. They cannot keep them in stock at all. Um, even in the United States, it's still a little difficult to get and find. Although I have seen them in the wild more often. But it's one of those things of like, when you don't want it, is it easier to find than when you're looking for it? You know what I mean? Like, if you're trying to find it, they just you just can't get them. But like, me, I already have, we have two of them here. So it's like, I don't even need it. So for me to walk in a store and see it, it's just like, eh. Whatever, but I, I'm just curious how it is for someone that's trying to get one, like how how difficult it really is to get one for them. Um, I know GameStop has them, but but whatever. But for me, I look at this and I go, I I think PlayStation is definitely going to try to do something in those terms. Um, I don't know. I I think they still push the VR narrative. Mm-hmm. So whatever they build for five, I think will be definitely strong enough to run the PS VR more. I don't want to say comfortably, just more more suitably, um, so it doesn't get mm-hmm. slowed down or anything like that. Like something more beefier. But yeah. graphics, yeah. I mean, there's really. I mean, I don't know what kind of tech you could really throw into it, other than making it better for VR and kind of. I don't want to say stealing the idea from Nintendo because it's not really stealing, but using the the Switch stuff, um, being inspired by it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> like I feel like that could potentially be something, um, but it's hard to say. It really is mm. hard to say. Um, I mean, if I looked at it and I went like, if I went, what is there? I don't feel like there's anything. I, I I really see no need to go to a five right now. Um, I know that's kind of a rumor, and, and I, I know that there's some type of hardware that's a potential rumor. Some mm-hmm. people are looking at like a, a new handheld, but I just don't see the reason to go to five. Like, although because they kind of half stepped with the pro, they might go to five just to outdo what Scorpio is. Um, but I just don't. Yeah, like I don't see yeah. much. Like, do you see anything that that could they could do? Well, in my, in my crystal ball, Bobby, mm-hmm. um, I'm seeing one of two things. Okay. So I'm seeing either they do go the um, hybrid route that mm-hmm. Nintendo has. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if they were to do that, then I think they have to sacrifice a bit of the. Uh, raw power that they've got going on at the moment you know playstation they came out strong being more powerful than xbox one they're sort of in that battle with microsoft about who's got the more powerful console yeah it's been their thing for a while um so if they did go hybrid route it probably would be probably significantly more powerful and significantly more expensive than the switch um but I don't think that that would actually offer a compelling enough like reason to buy that over a Switch because I think people are happy with what the Switch delivers at the moment in terms of graphics and portability and price. Like I think that Nintendo have got, have got the right idea there. And if Sony was to go that route, I don't think that just having a, a more beefier handheld hybrid, like console hybrid, would be the answer. Um of course, they've got their great exclusives that, that that would also be a selling point, but I don't know. I, I just can't see them going the hybrid route. I think what well, they're more likely to do, though... Well, hold on for a minute. Let me, let me just say this. Mm-hmm. I could see them... Because part of the issue with why the Vita PS4 didn't work was it was kind of an afterthought. You know what I mean? It wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't the, the mainstay at the beginning. So... The other thing is, like, the network is kind of crappy on the PS4. Like, the the internet is is kind of bad with that. Unless you're directly hardwired in. But, like, I, it takes me forever to download games and do anything with it connected to Wi-Fi. So I wonder if they could adjust that, produce a Vita 2, mm-hmm. and then go back to the streaming thing. Um, but, or remote play is the, what yeah. it basically is. But also, if they did a Vita 2 with a built-in, I don't know, what I don't want to say Wi-Fi, but like a built-in like 3G or 4G um, 
service where you like you could buy a plan from something or man you honestly if they just went that route they wouldn't even have to do that if they just went that route and told people like hey use your phone as a, as a hot a hot spot um you might see it that might be the only way they could keep the power keep the raw mm-hmm. power and be able to do, pull it off but they would definitely have to produce something that's better and more suited that talks to each other. Now, well, that that yeah. again, that would be that sort of semi se- semi like it's a console as well as a handheld with a connection between them rather than a single device. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to make it even more expensive. Yeah. Like. Well, of course, but but I don't think yeah. I don't think price truly matters to Sony and to Xbox. Like I think it does. I don't think it does. I look at the Scorpio, man. These guys, they they <clears> they, <throat> they march to the beat of their own drum. You know yeah, but I mean? like, they've also got the S. They've got the cheaper model. Like PlayStation has got the standard PS4. Xbox has got the Xbox One S. They are the budget options now. Now, and they're both they're both very good. And but a obviously, new console, dude. The new console yeah. came in at four hundred dollars. PS4 was four hundred dollars when it launched. Well, Xbox yeah. One I'm, was five hundred dollars. I'm just saying that. Yeah, like. The Switch is just a, a cheaper overall than having to buy a new console and a handheld and streaming the two together. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think that's like an elegant solution. Oh, I'm not saying it's going to be the perfect solution. Yeah, but I think I can see them trying to do something of that nature. I I, I don't know, man. Yeah. I just can't I, I think see you're them. Right though. Yeah, like if they did just have a, another handheld in the future mm-hmm. that spoke to the PS5 in a, a better way than the Vita did, yeah. then I can see that being their their that's their solution to the Switch. Because I think and, it, I think it bugs them yeah. so badly that they can't get into the handheld market. Like no matter yeah. what they do, they just cannot sell units that Nintendo owns them in that marketplace. Yeah. And they can't do anything. Every time they put something out, it just flops. And it may not flop per se, but it just doesn't. The Vita flopped. Um, but like the, the PSP, that did well. But it wasn't. Yeah, it did really but well. that only did well because people hacked it and homebrewed it, and you were able to get a bunch of Nintendo games on it. That's when. It, <laughs> that's when it started selling. Really. I, I don't. I don't know if that's the main reason. That's why a good it reason. Well, There's a lot of people that did it, man. A lot. The thing of is, people. I I see the PS5 when it eventually comes being more of, you know, it it's going to be a more powerful PS4 basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that they should really use that power in a different way. Like, sure, it's going to have nice graphics. It's probably going to be total 4K like a standard. But I think that. There's gonna be there's gonna become a point. I don't know how soon it's gonna be where the graphics just don't really matter. Like they they get to a point where you think yeah that's good enough. Like we can't go much further than this in terms of graphics. Mm. And I think it's gonna have to expand outwards um, into more things like handling physics and uh, sort of draw distance sort of stuff. You know stuff like you know like on Rabbids, right? I know this is Switch, but like it's quite obvious sometimes in the distance as you're walking towards things, you get the shadows that sort of come in and the pop in occasionally. Mm-hmm. Like stuff like that um, needs to be sorted out mm-hmm. before graphics get any better. I mm-hmm. think that frame rate needs to get a solid sixty, mm-hmm. good resolution, as we said, and it, it everything else needs to get better. Like. Because at the moment, I think there's too many games that look great, but have like weird glitches and, and oddities about them going on. Um, I don't know if that's down to tools how good the developers are, rather than the tech. I think it's more how good the developers are, because you don't see that with Naughty Dog. No, but I think Naughty Dog are very clever in the types of games that they design. You know, they're well, very and like... they also work very closely with Sony. Yeah, exactly. They're basically um, a first party for Sony, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, they are. You know, it, but, it's like you, I don't, feel you like... don't see that with uh, retro games. Like retro games is, I feel like they're they're equals. You know, what I mean, in terms of like, yeah. when retro does a game, you don't see issues with the hardware because they're working with Nintendo to fix that. I think it's the same way with Sony and Naughty Dog. You get mm. a Bethesda, and it's it's a hot mess. You know, what I mean, <laughs> for whatever reason, it's like yeah, so it's that's true. just that's just what it is. But you know, even when you look at like GTA, GTA is pretty spot on, man. 
when when they put games out, when Rockstar puts games out. So I think it really falls on the developers more than it does the hardware and what it can do. Because I think when you look at a game like... Okay, so when you look at a game like Fallout 4 and all the issues that was on the PS4, when you look at a game like Arkham Knight, where there were some glitches in that. Like, I actually fell through the, the world at one point mm-hmm. and was like, just free-falling through the world. And I was like, what in the heck is going on here? This is nuts. So when you look at things like that, and you don't see, like, you see issues, and then you look at a team like Naughty Dog, and then you go, you don't see issues at all. It, it To me, it goes, it's not the power. It's not the hardware. Because Naughty Dog is, and Naughty Dog, let's be honest, they push the, that they push that console to as far as they can. They, uh, yeah, they, they actually, do. like, yeah. you, look at, you look at Last of Us, and it was doing stuff on that PS3 that I never thought that PS3 could do. And... That to me is when it's like, okay, you're pushing this thing to limit. You look at the PS, you look at Uncharted Four. That game is so insanely gorgeous, and you look at how far it pushed the power of the PS4, and it wasn't even pushing it really. You know what I mean? So I think that it's not. I think to answer your question a little bit, it's not. It's more developer than it is the power of the PS4 mm. and all that stuff. But the frame rates and stuff, that's totally the power of the console. Like, if the yeah. games aren't getting 60 frames and all that. like, But again, Naughty Dog gets it. So, Yeah, I mean, when there's a lot of things going on, like in a game like Just Cause, um, there's obviously a hell of a lot of crazy explosions and, and characters on screen yeah. and things moving and getting destruction. Like, that is when there's like a heavy load that is is buckling the console you know yeah. and i feel like things like that even a great developer would still struggle to get a strong steady frame, frame rate with mm-hmm. with a intense situation like that and i feel that a ps5 could go some way towards making that easier on developers at least mm-hmm. um but but then like i don't know is that enough i mean it was enough to go from a ps3 to a ps4 because really they're very similar mm-hmm. types of console yeah they just it's just more power so. that's that's the thing that i think i don't get when i listen to people talk about how much like they want nintendo to like change and stuff it's like if you just want raw power you already have the xbox one and the ps4 what i look at it is like nintendo as limited as they are they still make games look pretty damn pretty. You know what I mean? Like they're yeah, they're pretty absolutely. They're, they're pretty damn spot on with how good they look. And I know it has a lot to do with like the art style and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like these games are just phenomenally done. You know, in terms of like it, they take the power and push it to the limit. And the thing is, is like you look at a game like Breath of the Wild, and you know that like it's still not pushing the power of the console. Like, it pushed the power of the Wii U. It pushed what the capabilities of the Wii U were able to do. But the Switch is more powerful than the Wii U. So it's, like, it's pretty awesome to see, like, Nintendo really push and push and push and see what they can do with consoles. So it's interesting. But, like, what they're able to do compared to what developers for PS4 and stuff are able to do, it just blows my mind that, like, there's... Like I like the the I like the Nintendo's able to work around and give us the most they can with what they, mm. what limited limitations they have. So oh it's, yeah, it's interesting to see that. So I'm curious. Yeah, what always makes me curious, makes me wonder, is like, what exactly? What okay? So we get a PS5. Well, let's 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 talk reality here for a second. When do you honestly think a PS5 even comes into play? Uh, I don't think until maybe 2020 at the earliest. That's, I think we've got to... That's what I'm think, saying. Yeah. Because we you got to think about it. Like, they went, what, four years? And then we got the Pro, and we got yeah. the, the Scorpio, right? And so you it, it took four years to get there. So you figure it's got to be at least another four years, right? At least... Until they go... Yeah, I mean, the PS3 lasted nearly 10 years. That's what I'm saying. You know, you would think that it's, you know, it's going to be... It's weird. It's crazy. Like, I'm I'm also curious, like, if Nintendo does what we, what we were talking about before, where they do the, the, the iterations every couple of years, how close they can essentially get to closing the power gap between... Yeah, I mean, dude, I am... 
really amazed at what Nintendo has pulled off with the Switch because as a piece of hardware, like its form factor is so small in comparison even to the uh, the Pro and even the standard PlayStation 4, yeah. like and the Xbox especially, like and I think the games are comparable. Yeah. Like you know, all right, fine, they don't have a lot of games that are sort of as graphically realistic mm-hmm. on the Switch, not yet anyway, but yeah. games that use art like they have a, a sort of artistic choice that works for the Switch, like mm-hmm. Rabbids. Mm-hmm. Like Rabbids is a beautiful game. Yeah. And even Breath of the Wild is a beautiful, beautiful game. And they pull off some some real cool stuff on the Switch. Mm-hmm. And you know, I don't think people need power. I don't think power's the future. And I, I think and, Nintendo has realized that for a long time. Well the Nintendo's realized that for a super long time. Like they've yeah. always you know, they've always stuck with their consoles for a very long time and pushed the power and pushed the power and pushed it. Like they they honestly didn't even want to move to a Super Nintendo. The only reason mm. they did was because Sega started closing the gap on them and, and started to take some of the market share, so that's why they went Super Nintendo. But even that, they took their time before they put it out. Like, they brought it out when they wanted to, not when people were like, you know, like, I want it now. They were like, whatever, just, when it gets there, it gets there. So, I just think that, like, how, how much more power do you need than the P? Pe- like, in five years, uh, I even think five years is not, you don't, you don't need the power in five years. Like, I don't... I honestly didn't see... I. So I've said this numerous times. I get why Xbox did the Scorpio. I don't understand why Sony did the Pro. Now, no. if Sony would just come out and go, Hey guys, we did the, the PlayStation Pro, PS4 Pro for VR. Like, then I would totally get it. Then I would go, okay, makes sense to me. They they haven't said that at all. That's well, yeah. not their that's not their selling point behind it. No, but I think that is probably the main reason. I think so too. Like, but I don't. Yeah. I think they're afraid that like they're going to scare people into thinking like I yeah. have to buy this three hundred dollar thing or four hundred dollars yeah. thing for the PS4, yeah. and then I got to buy a, a pro. If, so it's eight hundred dollars. Yeah, that, that scares people. I think the pro is just a weird thing because it's not true four K. Yeah. It, it's a half step, and you know. I don't, I don't know. I just don't know why people buy it, to be honest. Like, it's like when I, I say, I and know. I want people to understand this, when I say yeah. I understand why Microsoft did it, the reason why I say that is because they were getting crushed when when third parties were trying to develop for the PS4 and then go to develop for the Xbox One, they could not get the games to run as parallel. So Microsoft had to do something. Not only were they losing the war in terms of, like, you know, consoles sold they were losing the war in terms of third parties getting frustrated with them because it was taking them much longer to develop for and get games put over on and i think that microsoft was just trying to answer the cries of the developers and answer the cries of the people that were just like why can't why can't this game run 60 frames it can't even run 1080 it was running 900 like nintendo had mario kart running 1080 60 frames like why 59 frames on Wii U. <laughs> well, it depends on... Yeah, well... Stop. Yeah, I get you your know. point, though. Like, yeah. there, there is a bigger gap between the standard Xbox One and the X. Yes. Like, yes. that is a significant leap. Yes. The, the gap between the Pro and the standard PS4 is not as big. No, and exactly. it just seems it seems a little bit unnecessary. Yeah, I agree. Yes, exactly. So, okay. So, that all said, let's jump into the news. We're hot off the presses. Um, I will go first since I went first with the first topic. And Nintendo Achievement System coming, Japan Splatfest results, and Axiom Verge physical game delayed. Uh, it's got to be the achievements. I actually wanted to talk about this, so I'm glad you brought okay. this up. Yeah. So, um, basically, uh, like Spear, devs hint at the future of Nintendo Switch Achievement System. Um, they were quoted as saying Nintendo doesn't have an official doesn't have an official support for achievements and leaderboards like Sony and Microsoft, but we know they are working on it. We'll see how it goes, and we'll we'll add the rankings along the way. Um, and then when another this was during an, an Ask Me Anything, so this is during Reddit and AMA. Mm-hmm. So when another redditor pointed out that Nintendo haven't announced such a thing. 
and probably want to keep it a secret. The same developer put, oops, move along, nothing to see here, P.S. But seriously, I have a really strong feeling they have hinted at it a few times. So this is pretty awesome. If, yeah. they, if they do this, I think it's going to make a lot of people happy. And yeah. it will start to pull more of those hardcore fans over. Like, I yeah. look at, like, okay, so Chelsea Capri just bought a PS4, or not a PS4, a Nintendo Switch. But I know that, like, she's told Sean on numerous occasions, like, she wants trophies. So, if a game comes out on the Switch and it comes out on the PS4, she's going to buy it on the PS4 because she wants trophies. But if Nintendo offered something, then it's a win-win. Because now she can go, well, I got trophies on Nintendo. I have the ability to take this game on the go. This is just a win-win-win. You know, it's offering me pretty much what I'm missing on the PS4. So it's interesting. It's, it's you know, better late than never is what, what I like to say. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting to see that Nintendo is going this route. And when will we get it? That's that's the curious thing, but this is this is kind of neat that it was kind of like an oops, you know, by the developer, you know. Um, y- yeah, I think I think I think that was uh, if it's true, I yeah. think that that was a deliberate oops. You think? I think that that yeah, I think they they wanted to get attention on their game by getting this new story out there, um, you know, because who cares? Like who you know? I don't know. Like. I'm not saying that their game's bad or anything. I'm just saying it's so, not okay. a high-profile game. So, so. Let, me, let me go back. Okay, so this is what was actually said. A qu- the question was posed, Yeah. does your game have online rankings? That was yeah. the question that the Redditor put. Their yeah. official response was, Nintendo doesn't have an official support for achievements and leaderboards like Sony and Microsoft, but we know they are working on it. So I don't know that that was... I think that was just somebody talking at a turn honestly and didn't realize what they were saying possibly you know um the thing is like achievements personally i'm not too fussed about them on playstation Mm -hmm. um you know it it's interesting occasionally i will compare them with my best friends trophies i do too um you know, it's, uh, oh, what have I done in this game that you haven't? Like, yeah. it's a, it's a fun little competitive thing, yeah, but yeah. I'm not like I'm not one of those hundred percent completionist people that has to get the platinum. Like, like, I looked I at think... GTA Five to see what yeah. I did against you. All right, whatever. So um, <laughs> I got I got a lot more online trophies than you have. That's that's not the point. That's not the uh, point. Anyway, so <laughs> how many, many platinums do you have, Tui? Uh I got a few um, Telltale platinums. Yeah, so <laughs> you're cake. You're cake. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's all right. I, that's the same uh, ones I have too. I can't. Yeah. Get, I, I'm not really good at platinum. The thing is, I think that trying to get a platinum, I think for me, it ruins the experience. Yes. It goes too. It, it turns into too much of a slog or a mm-hmm. grind. But you know, I can see why people would in, it, enjoy it if people are like those completionist type people. They have yeah. got those personalities where they have to hoover everything up and get everything they possibly can. Yeah. Like, uh, so. And I think that it could be interesting to see what Nintendo does with it because they like to put a unique spin on things. They like to do things their own way. And I feel like they could do some cool stuff with trophies that we wouldn't necessarily expect. So, So originally originally we always had the conversation like, oh, well, they could just do stamps. And Mm. I really feel like stamps isn't the issue per se anymore because stamps are kind of going away. Since, well, yeah, Miiverse is gone, Miiverse so, is gone. <laughs> yeah. So what I would like to see them do is do pins. And okay. Cause, cause either either do pins or coins. But I would like to see... Coins might do better because of Mario. Um, but the one thing that Nintendo does is they're always giving away special edition pins. Like when yeah. you go to E3 or you go to like the Nintendo New York store during events and stuff, they're giving away pins. Reggie's always wearing lapel pins. like mm-hmm. uh, So I would love to see them embrace that and go, like, these are pins. Because um, that would be kind of cool. To, to Yeah. To you know what? That's a really good idea. Like, um, Because, like, you know, I can't remember which Kirby game it was. There's a Kirby game on 3DS that you can collect little keychains, mm-hmm. like pixely keychains. Uh, key and if they did something like every trophy you got, you got, like, a little... Almost, Almost like a in-game smash trophy. Yeah. 
something maybe maybe not a 3d model i mean that'd be cool if you could rotate it and look at it like that would that would that would be something cooler than just oh you got this thing pop up yeah it's a little bit of extra work for developers but maybe something that's more than just an icon something that you can go into a gallery and look at what you've you know accrued like all the different things you found so i agree that'd be awesome yeah Yeah. what uh what, what what news did you bring uh so i've got um, South Park controversial oh. virtual difficulty slider. Oh. Uh, LA Noir um, coming to PS4. Uh, details on that. And almost 20 years later, Nightmare Creatures sequel coming to PS4. Let's go South Park. Yeah, I knew you would. This is... This is ooh. Yeah, I, so... I, I um, like it, I like it, but I, I'm waiting for the... I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop on it. But get yeah, it. um... Yeah. So Eurogamer reports that selecting the difficulty setting at the start of South Park changes the color of your custom character's skin. Yes, you read that right. You can see it for yourself in the video. It is a video. Everyone's seen the video or the tweets about it. The game's difficulty slider ranges from easy to very difficult, and the harder it gets, the darker your skin tone becomes. Don't worry, this doesn't affect combat, South Park character Cartman can be heard saying. Just every other aspect of your life. Um... So, I think this is uh, incredibly smart of the developers. Um, it's a brilliant way of creating sort of a controversy, get people talking about your game, get all eyes on it because it, it's a it, it's completely outrageous. Yeah. Um, because it's you know it's commentary on like real life sort of politics and stuff and, and it's very and it's, part of what's going on right now well, yes, in the united states um, anyway. i don't know how it is where you are but like in the united states that's where we're at right now that's yes just and uh you know south park's known for like satirical humor and everything and and really just tackling everything head on like yeah. they don't they don't uh walk gently around anything yeah. you know if there's something controversial then they'll pick up on it in in the shows or whatever and yeah and I just think it's it's a really clever thing because, you know, it's it's social commentary, and you know that they don't mean it like, as in this is real life truth. They're just doing it to sort of get like a rise out of people, get people talking about the game. Like that's that's the main reason I think is in there because I, I don't think it has any effect on the game itself. Yeah. I, I think it's just something they throw threw in for a for fun like but to it, take but fun i mean on. but it does like no i don't think it does because no, 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 when no. you're in the what, what i'm saying like dude you make less money like when you when you okay so when you can when you do a combat session mm-hmm. you take away less money than the white characters or the the, the lighter sheet character is that true that's true I, didn't re- I did not read that yes that is true so I saw that the in game when you're doing the battles, you can change the difficulty of the battles in game. The the battles that the happen menu. aren't. It's the same. It's parallel. How it affects your social life is where being Interesting. black makes it harder. Like all right, I didn't know that. Di- people will treat you differently in the game if if you're if you're black compared to if you're white in the game and stuff like that. So, or the darker you get, the the more controversy it comes. So. That's where they're taking it to the more social, like yeah, you know. I like what they're doing. I'm just waiting for some political groups to start grabbing it and start bashing it and like saying like, "Oh, they're mocking the way things are," because that's bound to happen. And I know yeah. that's not what they're doing. What they're trying to do is show, hey, South Park is very known for like doing like. I mean, I'm not a fan of the show, but I know what they do and all. Mm-hmm. But they're very, they're very polarizing in the terms of like they like to. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, they're going to do it, you know, and they because they want to put the spotlight on it. They have a platform that they utilize yeah. to speak about, and that's what they do. They've been doing it since probably season two, honestly. Season one was always just kind of like, eh, but season two, they really started to, like, take on the political stuff, um, especially, like, they're Can- it's a Canadian company and a Canadian cartoonists and all that stuff, but so they really always, like, really hammer the United States with things that they do. Um, so I, I get why they're doing this, and I, I applaud them for doing this. I think it's definitely something that's that's interesting. Um, so here's the thing. What about gender? What do you because mean? Um, 
you can be a boy or a girl in it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, there is a section of the game, right? I don't. This might be a spoiler, but I've seen it in the previews and stuff. So, okay. but um, there's a point where you go to um, what's that guy's name? The teacher who, who's like go okay. that guy, right? Mm -hmm. Uh Names escape me. Anyway, so you go to him, and there's a bit of like sex education that's going on, and he talks to you about your gender, and you can say you're a boy or a girl, um, or other. Mm -hmm. And if if you pick other, then he calls your parents, and he's like talking to your parents, like, uh, yeah, your child isn't associating itself with any gender. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Are they confused or something yeah. like that? And I think it's pretty interesting the way they do that. And even if you do click boy or girl, like you can, there's other options that appear like transgender or cisgender, stuff like that. Yeah. And I just wonder like if you do pick like straight up girl or something, whether that affects the amount of money you make as well, because oh, everyone knows that, that in real life it's, it's, yeah similar in the jobs you know people, women tend to earn less than men yeah. you know and yeah so i, I wonder if that's going to be as controversial as the skin color thing like, interesting I, I i think it's definitely an interesting take what yeah. they're doing i'm kind of curious to see how it all pans out as time moves forward and, and once they once they get everything out there but it's it's definitely interesting i'm curious what Definitely curious what our what our listeners think and, and yeah. do they have issue with it or are they okay with it? Like I know they they um I think it was when I when I for the yeah when I was a member of Nintendo Voice Chat earlier this week, I had seen people posting about it and Wait, you're not a member anymore? <laughs> yeah, I left. Um I had no idea we'll talk, we... we'll talk about it after the air. All right, uh, fair enough. Fair so enough. uh <laughs> But yeah, I had seen like people posting like Joey Ferris was like, "Oh, this is great, man! I love it. I love what they're doing." And so it's it's kind of interesting to see how it's going to affect people and how people are going to take it and such. So I don't know. We'll see. But um, let's before we wrap this up, let's jump into what we are playing. Um, so yeah, Toby brought up this this baseball game I I bought this week. Okay, so I bought RBI Baseball. Um, there's other games I'm playing too, but th th I wanted to talk about this one a little bit. So, basically what it is, is RBI Baseball was a game that was massively pos popular back during the NES days. And what they did was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Major League Baseball bought the rights to this game. And they hired some developing teams to say, like, we want you to make the original game just better graphics. So that's basically what it is. It's a it's a bare bones baseball game. I think better graphics is in the eye of the beholder. Well, Bobby. better compared to I'm talking about the NES days. Yeah, but I think NES probably looks better than this. No, it Stop it! No, it doesn't. It, please don't don't do that. Bobby, I watched a trailer for this game, okay. right? And not just a trailer. I watched some gameplay, and number one, load times are atrocious. No, they're not. Yes, they are, Bobby. No, it, no it, they're not. I, I played. Yeah, the they game. are. They are, man. Okay. I, in this video, it took way too long. But like, what, I was what, like, what? Okay, what was the, the? Was it for the Switch or was it for like? Yeah, PS4? For the, it, was, it was on. Switch. I don't know. I don't have any. The only load time that takes a little bit is when you go when you pick your teams and you yeah. go that way. But like in between innings and stuff. It's quick. It's yeah, fun. yeah. That's what I mean. Like, pick the team and then jump into the that's, game. But that's point. every base. But let's let's, let's uh, compare. Uh, anyway, Bobby, compare right. it to the show. Seriously, I'm just saying that FIFA loads so much quicker, and it's so much better looking. So anyway, just stop. Get into the gameplay. Yeah. The characters, right? So not only does the the batter or the hitter, whatever you call it in America, mm, right? The yeah. He uh, when when like you're moving him, like he just slides. That's how his, old school baseball games work. His feet, his feet don't move. He just yeah. slides. Even even the the chucker, the thrower, whatever they call it. Listen, right? listen newsflash. <laughs> wait, wait, newsflash. That's right. how it is in the show. In the show, if I push them around, they don't just like step around and move. They slide. If that's big why, baseball games, why? Been, what the hell is that? That's, that's been baseball. Listen to me. That's how baseball games have been forever. That's not like when you, 
if that's the comparison, if that's what upsets you, that's just because you haven't played baseball that's games That's just before. one thing, Bobby. That's okay. one thing I'm picking up on. Listen, the crowd, right? The crowd is horrible. The crowd looks worse yeah. than N64 wrestling games, Bobby. Like, I like, listen like, to me. I'm playing it to play baseball. And you know, I feel bad for mocking you about it because you, you obviously enjoy it. Enjoy it. I yeah, do. you obviously enjoy it and... It's not all about how it looks. Well, because like, if you're not. having fun it's about with the game, because here's enough. what I wanted: I wanted a baseball game that I yeah. could pick up and play very quickly. I didn't want a baseball game that takes me forever to learn how to hit. It is so difficult to play the show because mm. you have to devote so much time to it. And what I don't about, have um, the time to devote to it anymore. Are there any good like Mario baseball games? Like when was the last Mario baseball? I think game? on the Wii U or on the Wii. Yeah. On the I think on. I think on the Wii was the last time. The Wii was the last yeah. time. But that's still not great. Like, I don't want... Isn't it? Because I don't want the antics. I just want to play oh, like baseball. I don't want to have, like, fire pitches and yeah. all that stuff. I just want to play baseball with the baseball teams. How much did you pay for it? $23. Okay. It wasn't so it's not bad. like... You, it's not, it you didn't pay $60 No, for I wouldn't have bought it for $60. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have bought it for $60. When I look at it, I go, is it the show? No, not at all. Like, I'm looking at it and... and, and so, the face value of yeah, what it yeah. is. And that's what I wanted to say. Like, it's If you're looking for a great baseball game, this is not the baseball game. If you're looking for a throwback to the NES era baseball game, then this is the game. Like, If you enjoyed baseball games on the NES era, like yeah. even on the NES, RBI Baseball wasn't the best baseball game. That went to Baseball Stars. But it was still a solid game. And the appeal to it was you got to play with all the major league teams, all yeah, so players. that's what I was going to say. Like, are the actual real players yeah, in this? Yeah, the real players are in it. The real teams, that's good. the real uniforms, the real stadiums. Yeah. Like, all that stuff is there. Um, I I enjoy it. It's not the is greatest. There anything, is there anything you don't like about it? Oh, there's a lot I don't like about it. Tell us some things that you don't like about I it. I don't like the controls of the pitching, because I don't feel like it's as fluid as it was. Like, it's just a little different. It's very mm-hmm. limited. Um, I don't like that the players all don't dive. Like, the infielders will dive for a ball, but the outfielders, to make them dive, it's not good. Like, it would be easier right. if I could... I do this all the time. Like, I'll switch players rather mm-hmm. than dive. So, a ball's hit to the outfield, and I'll run, and I want to dive to try to cut the ball off. And when I hit the button, it switches to the other player. Right. And, and now I've completely lost the ball, and the yeah. ball's going past and all that. So, but that just takes time to learn the, 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 the controls. Um, I do like how... how quickly i'm starting to pick it up like i've played mm-hmm. three games so far and i'm actually starting to hit the ball better i'm getting it better defensively like the first game i played they have a 10 run rule what the 10 run rule means is like at the end of an inning if one team is beating the other team by 10 points or more the game's over they just right. stop the game and end it so the first game i played i got 10 run ruled and the sec- the second game i played I actually held it within check. I still lost the game, but it was closer. Dude, I'm telling you, when I play MLB The Show, it takes me days to be able to get competitive. And I don't, yeah. don't want to just sit there and keep losing and losing. So, and losing. I want to start making, I want to see myself progressing and making gra- making up grounds. So in MLB The Show, mm-hmm. do the characters slide yes. in the same way? They do. Yes. That blows my mind, Bobby. I don't, I, I haven't played it in a year, but I'm almost pretty certain that they don't walk to where you want them to go. And it's the same thing. Like, if you want the pitcher to be over to the left or right, they slide. That's just, that's baseball. That's wow. the way it's always been. Okay. It's always been that way. Well, you're talking about when you move them around the batter's box. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's always just the way it's been. Wow. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. Because you can't really, you don't see them because you're looking from a different angle. Right. It's more of a be a catcher's view of right. it. So when you're moving around, it's sliding, but you don't really see them sliding right, around. Right, because it's right. more of um the thing of it is, is like you have a box, right? And yeah. it'll be like the ball is coming into the right upper right corner of the box. You have a a circle that you have to try to get up there, right, to the ball, plus swing at the same time. You're doing yeah. two things at once. It's so annoying, man. It's mm. so frustrating. So I don't know. I, I did see that Matt Phillips said that, like, I guess there's a retro style to yeah. MLB The Show. So I might give that a try and try that again. Um, I, I totally recognize that MLB Show is a far superior game. 
like above and beyond. But they're the only company that truly makes a baseball game. Yeah, and it is. It's like playing. It's it's worse than playing Madden. Like Madden is so technological now. Like you need to know how to play football almost to play Madden. Yeah, um, it's the same thing with MLB the Show. Like it's. I get it. Like when I was fifteen, it's intimidating. Years old, yeah, if I was fifteen yeah. years old, I'd probably love it. Like I, my dad came over one day. He's like, "Dude, is there just a regular baseball game that I could play with you? This would be the game I could play with my dad." Yeah, I could be, this is an easy entry. Anybody could pick this up and play it, and that's what I. So like. it's a kids game. Essentially, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I like it. I, I'm fine with that. Whatever. I also bought. Uh, <laughs> I was playing it just before we started the show. Kamiko. 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 That's a yeah. really good game, man. It is a good game. Yeah. I, I played. I'm and cheap the, too. Really cheap. It was five bucks, man. Yeah. I, I played to the end of. The, um, I'm. I picked the fire girl. Yeah. Um, and I'm at the end boss of that level. So. I, What's I, interesting is every time you pick change your character, you start from the very start. It's like their own separate file. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's um, that's really cool. I bought Double Dragon. I haven't played that yet. I heard that's bad. I heard it's bad too. Yeah. The, the original games weren't that great either, but whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's more for the retro stuff. Is why I got yeah. It. I yeah. bought League of Evil, but I haven't played that yet either. Um, I'm gonna play that in a little bit. I watched uh, Topic Nintendo's review of mm-hmm. that. And it, it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it's a good Gary, review. Did Gary say it was good? Yeah, he said it was, you know, uh, I don't think it would keep your attention for too long, mm-hmm. um, but it's fun, like, in short bursts. Um, obviously, I'm playing more Mario Rabbids. Love that game. How um, far are you I'm in, in I'm that? at the end of level two. I'm yeah. at the final boss of level two. Um, the big the big dude with the shield. The big rabbit with the shield. Yeah. Um, he's, he's not easy. Um and then I started Lego City Undercover, and I actually started Minecraft Story Mode this week, which yeah. I'm kind of liking Minecraft Story Mode. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of fun, man. It's it, so far. I mean, I got to play more of it. I'm still in the first, yeah, yeah. first chapter, but we'll see. So far, so good. Um, I did buy Lego Worlds. Yeah, I think I you should wait until they patch that a bit more because I think it's a bit janky at the moment. Is it? I haven't played it. Yeah. Have you played it or no? No. Okay. No. I haven't um, played it yet, but I bought it because I figured yeah. it out when I... Um, so I'll wait to see it. what you think of it. What are you, um, what are you playing? Pretty much just playing more Chicken Wiggle and uh, Rabbids, Mario Rabbids. So Mario Rabbids, I'm at the mid-boss of World 3 and uh, I had my first fair of the game oh you know God. your rating um and i thought i did okay i had i had one character die and um i knew that i wouldn't get a, a perfect score for that mm-hmm. but i was one turn over like because they have you do yeah. it within a certain amount of time and it gave me a fair so i was like oh it's a bit harsh like i'm sure it is only one it might have been a couple of turns anyway fair that a was a hard thing fair is a wonderful it, thing man because that's I, oh man i'm brutal thinking <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, I was refusing to play as Rabid Luigi and Rabid Mario. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I had a hatred for them, and I was like, I was not leveling them up. I was not buying them weapons. I was like, I want nothing to do with you. I really, really like Rabid Peach, and I like Peach and I like Luigi. But it got to a point in this particular mid-boss stage that... The team I had just weren't cutting it. Like, they didn't have the right movement speed. They didn't have the right sort of weapons or damage. So I was like, fair enough. I'll try out Rabid Mario and Rabid Luigi. And actually, their special skills are pretty amazing. Yeah. And their weapon, like, Mario, like, Rabid Mario is a powerhouse. Yeah. That dude is destruction. Yeah. Like, He's got the ability when he walks through a character, it will cause like a shock wave and it will do more damage to other characters that are nearby. Oh, wow. And that's like, I had no idea that was a thing. Oh, wow. And his weapons are really powerful and he's got the hammer like Mario has. So, yeah. Like, I might have to use him because I'm struggling yeah, a little bit where I am. Exactly. Too. Like, if you're struggling with dealing damage, then get him out because Man. he is powerful. I have to use him. And uh, also, Rabbit Luigi was cool because of his vampire abilities. Um, and they're actually really useful because it doesn't only affect him, it can affect your other characters as well. Check that out. Yeah. Check it out. So, 
that is all. Thank you guys for listening to us on iTunes, DaySpace.com, over on Google Play. Watching the video if that's where you did it, because a lot of you are watching it, and we appreciate that so much over on YouTube.com forward slash Nintendo Guru. Check out our Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash Make Us Better. You can follow Toby at Toby's underscore take. You can follow me at Nintendo Gurus. Peace out, Preston. I'm going to do a quick plug here, Bobby. I know that you're going to hate me for it, but I've just finished my second episode of The Greatest Games That No One Loves, and that will be coming out very shortly, won't it, Bobby? I know. I already, I already turned off the recording. No, you did. You did. I haven't even said bye, Bobby. I, Don't you matter. even lie to me. I turned off the it, recording. No, you didn't. Don't lie, I, Bobby. I'm not lying. I turned off the my, recording. My new video is nobody... coming out soon. Whatever, and... man. Nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you then, Bobby. (laughs) (laughs) You're so mean to me. That's the the second video you sent me, right? The second video, yeah, because I sent you the collab thing that's going on. Um, That's big. Anyway, later, masturbators. Oh, Jesus. What the (laughs) hell?